All right, folks, what is going on? It's episode 319 of the First and Primary Show. I am VF Baller. Over here, we talk about Georgia Southern Atlanta Falcons football. And today, we're going to talk about this word called tanking. Why tanking is not an option, why people like to use that word, and uh, what, what is up with this? Why? I just want to know why, why people think it's an option. I, I just don't understand it. Now, we're going to get into all of that, and um, just going to have a quick discussion about that. If this is your first time here, welcome to the First and Frame Rate Show. I am VF Baller once again. Uh, I talk about Georgia Southern and Atlanta Falcons football, and Georgia Southern is doing pretty good as far as their practices and getting ready for spring football. If you want to find out any of what they're doing, you can go ahead and uh, go to the Georgia Southern football Twitter, and um, they, they put up clips on what they're doing in practice, and it looks really good. Those those kids are working hard, and it looks like coaches getting them uh, ready for the you know, spring game and the football season. So it's going to be really, really cool to see how that plays out. Well, if this is your first time here and you want to listen to uh, other avenues of this show, because I don't just be on YouTube, I'm also on Rumble. And you can also find me on Anchor, Stitcher, Spotify, Apple, and Google, or any of your other favorite platforms that you may find this. Just hit first and frame rate, so I should pop right on up. And if you want to listen to the audio side of this, those are your options. Uh, also, if you um, don't mind helping the show grow, uh, we're at episode 319. If you want to continue to help us grow, you can donate. All the links are down in the description of all of these platforms. And uh, hopefully you uh, guys will enjoy the show. Let's have this discussion. Tanking. What What is up with this? Why people want to talk about tanking and this other word that they they like? You got some fans that really want to talk about this uh whole situation about rebuild. Oh, it's a rebuild. Like even if even if they said that, that how does that make you feel? Even if that was the case, I mean, I think at the end of the day, we're out here to win football games. I mean, that, that's all it is. We're here to win football games. So with that being said, um rebuilding just comes into the, the personnel that you bring in and whatever the case may be that happens behind that regardless of that you're gonna have to if you're getting new faces on the on the team that's a rebuild you know they may not want to use the wording but who cares you know what's going on so it doesn't matter the main thing is you want to get out there and compete and uh some people that are in the world of you know you know atlanta falcon fans and I've seen this with other teams as well, so it's not just exclusive to our fan base. You see people who are just like, okay, we're not good enough, so just lose every game. And I, I find that very interesting. Like, why would you want a product out there that just deliberately want to lose and tank? Oh, there's a, a good player that's going to be in the draft next year, and we should try to get him and let that player, in some cases, in most cases, let that brand new player that comes in who was great in college come in and lose more games. <laughs> it's just, I, I, I don't understand it. I mean, I guess, I guess when you get a generational talent, I guess it offsets at the end of the day for the, for the I mean, the mentality, it, it makes it seem like it offsets because you tanked and now you got, let's say Bryce Young or something like that. You get Bryce Young in here and you may have one, you may have one more season or at the at the minimum, you may have one more season where you lose a handful of games again. Or you may get that rookie, get that rookie in here, and uh, he's already stacked with a lot of other players that's around him, and now you're going to feel that you can, uh, you can win football games. So that's the mentality of tanking. And, I mean, you look at teams like the 76ers. The 76ers done this for years. They've done it. They tanked like – I. I, I <laughs> I'm not going to say they tank, but there there's high evidence that they did. There's a lot of evidence to say that they did. Maybe they did. And you see where they got them. They're, they're still struggling to an extent. I mean, they can't even they, – they, they couldn't even beat the Atlanta Hawks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, you know, that's another story for another day. But when it comes to the world of football, you don't tank. You don't tank. I mean, you, you can look at teams like the, the Jacksonville Jaguars who are – I don't, I'm not going to say they're tanking. They're just losing games. <laughs> and you see where they are. I mean, they basically blew up their team five, six years ago when it was in the AFC Championship game. And you look at them now. You look at the Jets. Jets are not deliberately tanking. They're just bad. 
So why would you, you know, want to be in that? world of purgatory where you you're winning four games a year because you're calling yourself tanking and and you just can't get out of that 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 level of purgatory hey like what 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 happens if you say you're going to tank and it doesn't work out then you're going to be like the teams i just mentioned i mean do people do this when they are uh you know at, at work or do they do this in their real life? Like, okay, I'm never gonna make. I'm not gonna make it this day, so I'm just gonna fall back. But when I do, you know, when I do get it right, I'm gonna get it right. You know, no, you you keep pushing at it every day. You keep working hard every day. You know, you don't you don't. There there's no throwaways in any aspect of you know, in any aspect of production. There's no throwaways. So would the Falcons come in and say, hey, we're gonna sit here? and continuously try to build a team that, that's ready to compete and win football games, I, I have no problem with that. If the outcome turns out to say that we don't win games, then you, you go down swinging. You don't just sit here and say, uh, we're just going to put a product on the field and and uh, we know we're going to lose every game, then is what it is what it is. And uh, we'll be back when we get a, you know, a top three pick and then when we get that top three pick, it's all it's gonna make everything all better. No, I mean, look, right now, uh, Bryce Young or any of these other quarterbacks, because we got a lot of quarterbacks coming out next year. Um, they're I think they're more talented than this season. I mean, this level of quarterbacks that we got in this draft, upcoming draft. But not one quarterback turns everything around right away. They don't turn things around right right away. The the whole situation with Joe Flacco and Matt and Matt Ryan. That was literally an anomaly. Now, you look at these other quarterbacks that are out here now, the Josh Allens, the Justin Herberts, the Pat Mahomes. I want want y'all to understand that they went through growing pains. It was not instant success. I mean, the Chargers, they look good, but they didn't didn't get that far. You don't want to remember what the Josh Allen days looked like prior to him being the quarterback he is. Like the first two seasons, I mean, it was rough. You know, it was pretty rough. I think Pat Mahomes did very well as a rookie. I think he did very I – I don't think – yeah, I think he did pretty well as a rookie. And I think he may be on that level where um, you look at a Joe Flacco or a Matt Ryan where they come right away – come in right away and they win double-digit um, seasons, I mean, winning seasons. I mean, you don't – it doesn't happen all the time like that. Yeah, you want to have a quarterback that, that you can build around – and there's nothing wrong with that. I, I, I'm, I'm dead serious. There's nothing wrong with that. But you just don't want to go through that process of saying, "Hey, we're deliberately just going to just drop everything and just do that." Um, when it comes to the Falcons, the Falcons can still do that. The Falcons can still continue to build around Mariota. Nobody wants to really talk about that, but you, you, they can do that. I mean, they got him on the cheap. He still can play some ball. And, you know, so you can still build around him and be okay. So don't be surprised. I, like, seriously, I talked about this yesterday on the show. If they move up in the draft, yeah, that's still a possibility. But don't be surprised if they don't. And they stick with Mariota throughout his contract, 2022 and 2023. I mean, it's an option. But what's not an option is tanking. That that's 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 not an option. You you still have to put a product on the field and win football games. Casey Herod already said this in an interview. He's here to win games. Damian Williams is here. He's already said they're they're here to win games. I'm pretty sure all of these guys that they signed are here to win football games. Marcus Mariota has something to prove. You know what I mean? You you do you don't just you don't sign players to one year to prove it deals. And they're just going to sit here and just say, hey, I'm going to come in and we're going to make sure we lose every game. These guys got jobs. These guys got, got to put stuff on tape just in case these one-year deals are not uh, extended and they have to go to get to another team. And when that happens, the next team who sees them like, okay, what's up with, you know, Case, uh, not Casey here because he's on a two-year deal. Let's say, for instance, what what's going on with Lorenzo Carter? Yeah, he signed a one-year deal. He's out there throwing away games because he's not giving all his effort. Why should we sign him for it? Why, why, why should he get signed to another team? Damian Williams, oh, he he's not running as hard enough. He's not doing what he's supposed to do on the field because he's throwing away games. 
He's dropping passes. He's not running the route correctly. He's not. But he's not picking up blocks. He's doing. He's doing his uh his imitation of um Devontae Freeman. So he they're not um looking to sign him. These guys got lives that they they, they want to prolong their NFL career. You're not just going to sit there and throw away games and then wondering why you're not getting a job at the next spot. Why why would the Falcons want to resign you if you're going to throw away games? I mean, this is not a. I mean, you really think this is a situation like uh, their owner in, in Miami where they're paying people to throw games allegedly? I mean, we got we got we got to really really understand this. I mean, you got guys who played hard: Isaiah Oliver, Eric Harris, Grady. I mean, we can go to the veterans: Grady Jarrett. Grady, Grady Jarrett is not coming. He's not coming back every season to lose games. You don't. I mean, regardless, this season that's coming up is 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 going to be a tough schedule. I mean, we got the Cardinals coming into play. You got the Browns coming to play. That's interesting. D- D- Deshaun Watson possibly going to be playing against us. I don't, I don't know what his suspension is going to be like. San Francisco's coming in. The Bears. You got the, the Chargers coming in. The Steelers. So you, we, we got some high-level competition coming in. And it's, it's going to be a possibility to where that we don't win these games. Because even though... I, I commend Terry Fontenot and them, and and they're 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 doing their best to put it put a team together. They're putting a they're, they're putting a fairly t- decent team together. I, I I cannot I can't knock that. I like the team that they're putting together, but at the same time, I know these other teams that we're playing against they're they're better. I know a lot of these teams are better. We talked about this when the schedule came out. You know what I mean? So we, we, we right, the schedule hasn't come up, but we know who our opponents are. You know, so when we're playing against teams like, you know, uh, you know, when we're playing against teams like the teams that are in the AFC North and the NFC West, it's not going to be easy. But at the same time, that doesn't mean you just sit there and just, okay, these teams are better, so we're just going to sit here and fall back. No. I'm looking at the schedule from last year. A lot of these games outside of the Dallas and the Patriots game. They were fairly competitive. Maybe the 49ers game. Who well, there wasn't. We lost a lot of games by like seven points or less. I think it was probably like four or five games that we lost about you know, a bigger margin. We 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 are even though it's it's, it's going to be a totally different team now. We're a totally different team. We're not going to be the same team as last year. But I mean, we we don't know what we're looking into, and I think that's one thing. I think a lot of people know not knowing what's ahead of them is one of the reasons why they just throw their hands up and say, "Hey, forget it. Why don't we wait till we know what we have and go from there?" This is why a lot of people say, like, hey, we should go ahead and tank and get another, you know, uh, get one of these top quarterbacks next year because we know what we're working with. We don't know what Marcus Mariota is going to do. You know what I'm saying? We don't we don't know if Mike Davis could bounce back. I think one of the only things that's 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 really uh, only thing that's really concrete on the offense is Cordell Patterson, Kyle Pitts and the level of the offensive line play, which I will say this. The offensive line isn't as bad as people think it is. No, and I'm not saying that to be biased. I'm I'm dead serious. Let me see. Look at this real quick. Sorry for the. I want to look at these pro pro uh, football references right quick. I want to look up. Oh, uh, let's see, 2021. Per game, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think that this the, the offensive line is as bad is as it is as it is. I I truly believe that um they've gotten better throughout the by the end of the season. 
because they, they were abysmal at the beginning of the season. They were really bad. But I will give him, I will give them a lot of credit that they've done a little bit better. They gave up 40 sacks to uh, Matt Ryan got sacked 40 times this past year. I, I want to see what that is on a game-by-game basis. I really want to see that, or what it was on a game-by-game basis. I'm, I'm really interested to see that. But nevertheless, I think the offensive line just need a little bit, you know, they need a little bit of help. I mean, obviously they do, but I don't think the line is that bad. So I think when you look at all the, uh, when you look at all of the, you know, the the talent on the field offensive-wise, offensive, uh, offensive wise, you, you're just probably looking at, um, you know, Kyle Pitts and Cordell Patterson. They're probably like the two consistent. And um, when it comes to defense, you know, you got A.J. Terrell. Casey Hayward is going to be that consistent guy. Grady Jarrett's going to be who he is. Everybody else is kind of like an anomaly. Because, I mean, Deion Jones would be there, but we just don't know. But so I, I understand why people will sit here and be like, okay, I understand why um, people feel this way. And I get it. I, I'm not going to sit here and say I don't. I mean, it's kind of crazy not to think that way. But uh, at the same time, you have to figure out, you know, um, I ain't going to say you have to figure out. You have to trust your team. You have to trust what's going on. And uh, it, it may suck. Some people, I know there's some people on Twitter right now saying how bad Terry Fano is and and Thomas Dimitrov was better. And, you know, I'm not going to get into all that. But I will say that, um I will say that uh, the moves that Terry Fano is making are actually pretty, pretty solid. In my opinion, I think they're pretty solid. So uh, we're just going to have to see what the product is on the field. It's only their first year um, putting moves together. And I think what they got um, going on is uh, – then what they got going on is pretty special. I think they got something that, that, that can actually – be something special i don't think it's something that's gonna be really big and significant right away but i don't think this is a situation where you just throw everything away and uh just worry about getting a top five pick once again next year you know i i just don't see that when i'm looking at this before i mean i'm gonna get ready to close this out but when i'm looking at this as far as the offensive line because this this is something that i really thought from the beginning that the Falcons should, you know, touch upon. I felt like the Falcons should touch upon this uh, was the offensive line. I, I really thought that this was going to be one of the things that they're going to go after in the beginning of the season, of the off season, was going to draft somebody in the, off, in the offensive line. Or draft somebody in the offensive line. So I'm looking here, like, based on the middle of the season, they got a little bit better as far as Matt Ryan getting uh getting sacked it was fairly consistent throughout the entire uh season i think the only thing that got better was he wasn't getting his hit as much um he he wasn't getting uh, hurries was pretty much the same uh throughout the um throughout the season and the sacks was pretty much the same. but as far as him getting hit uh there probably pretty much wasn't the it, it wasn't as much so the offensive line for the most part, just played consistently throughout the season as far as him getting hit 40 times. That, that's way too many times. I felt like the play was a little bit better, but from the numbers, it just doesn't see that. Now, the eye test from what I've seen, it seemed like it was better. Because at the end of the day, when you're getting hit less, it looks good. But at the same time, when you're get, still getting sacked consistently throughout the season, three times a game, uh, I think the Buffalo game he got sacked five times that game, and the Saints game the Saints game was another three times. The last four games was basically on par with everything else throughout the season, but the hits and the pressure, well, the hits went down. So, I guess that's what I mean. Where you know, I don't know. I, I just based on what I've seen throughout the season, it looked like they was getting better based on the beginning of the season because the beginning of the season it was like it was it was it was terrible i mean matt was basically running for his life throughout then about then but at the end of the season as the season was closing out just seemed like he was getting better it was getting better as far as protection but nevertheless they're gonna have to fix that they're gonna have to fix it and um when you when you look at this whole situation with uh with like say people think they should tank or rebuild the main thing with that the main thing with that is if 
you get Mariota a little bit of protection, he doesn't turn over the ball. We're talking about a whole different ball game. You're, you, you're talking about – you're literally talking about winning football games if you can have a little bit uh, better protection in in uh, for the most part, mainly not turn over the ball. And I think that's one thing I always said about um, – Marcus Mariota when he first came to Atlanta. I think I said the main thing with that is if he doesn't turn over the ball, you have a chance to win every game that's out there. The quarterback just cannot turn over the ball. But uh I I've kind of gone on a rabbit hole as far as quarterback protection and in, in, in the quarterback in general. But before I get out of here, I want to say this. Look, tanking is not an option. It's not. You you just cannot you cannot tank. We got to understand that you in this business to compete. You're in this business to do to to win football games. You're in this business to to be better every day, and not only in this business but every aspect of production. You 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 don't you don't get in the level of production in any aspect of you know of life to sit there and say okay today I'm going to lose. If you end up losing, so be it. But when you are um, in the process. I ain't gonna say in the process of losing, but in 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 the level or in the uh, art of defeating of being defeated, you go down swinging. You don't sit here and just say, "Hey, it's all good. I'm going to just fall back." No, we don't do that. So hopefully, you guys will understand this. If you like this content, hit the like button, share this content, subscribe to any of these avenues if you can. Um, also, I advise you to subscribe to one more than one because you never know what happen, what will happen to one platform. Something may happen on YouTube, but I'm still on Rumble, vice versa. Something may happen on Anchor, but I'm still on Apple. You, you just never know. So subscribe to more than one and uh, give me a five-star rating if you can. Um, if not, give me some feedback. Let me know what I'm doing wrong. Did I go off the rails here? Do I, do I not, I'm not knowing what I'm talking about? Um, do I need some more education on this? Let me know. Because we're all here to help each other. And not only that, I want to give the best information possible. And I want you to give me the best feedback possible. So hopefully you guys enjoy your Friday. And just continue to watch this team. Just watch them. I think this team is going to be a lot better than, than advertised. And hope you guys enjoy the rest of your sun, oh, not Sunday. Hopefully you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'm going to get some more things done around here. And I will see you guys on the next one. You guys take it easy. You guys be blessed. Peace.